invest in your future. Student loans were part of that package. Imagine if employers value not only the work you're doing, but also the work you've already put in, if they helped to pay off your student loans. At futurefuel.io, you'll be connected with employers offering great jobs, and you contribute an additional 5 to 10% of your salary directly to your student loan provider. Futurefuel.io puts you at the front of the line. No more waiting at career fairs and repeatedly applying to jobs only to hear nothing back. At futurefuel.io, employers come to you first. You can upload much more than just a resume to your profile. Add videos, link to your work, and showcase yourself as the awesome individual you are. Employers get to know you by starting a conversation directly with you. You'll be able to establish a connection prior to the interview, increasing your chances of not only getting a job, but the right job for you. Your employer will make payments directly to your loan provider. They're automatically routed to where your interest rate is the highest, and you're notified when payments are made. And the best part? There are no salary deductions, no minimum commitments, and you can leave at any time without owing your employer a thing. Sound too good to be true? Here's how we're making it happen. We've cut out the inefficiencies of the middleman. For example, instead of headhunters earning upwards of 30% of your salary to land your job, FutureFuel.io is shifting that money towards your loans. On average, these payments help crush student loan debt within three to five years. What does that mean for you? It means having cash to do things you want to do. Take that big trip. Put a down payment on a home or contribute to your 401k so you can enjoy retirement. At FutureFuel.io, we believe the future is a choice. Your choice. That's why we've chosen to have student debt. Sign up today and start to crush your debt. Crush your debt. Fuel your future. FutureFuel.io So good evening. I'm Laurel Taylor. I'm the founder and CEO of Future Fuel. So hopefully that gives you a sense of who we are and what we're doing. So it is our ambition and aspiration to reduce student debt by $3 billion by 2020. And we will achieve that end by placing 100,000 users with innovative employers. And these are employers who are doing exactly what we just described in the video, which is investing in their human capital versus investing in kind of aspects of the system that are just extremely inefficient today. And we are solving this kind of number one problem that we're hearing from the private sector today, which is really around access, reach, and the ability to hire and retain core talent in the market today in areas that are super overheated, which we all know is science, technology, engineering, and math, and there were a couple of other core areas as well. Um, so I kind of lived this story while I was at Google in that uh, I was constantly approached by people that really were excited about working for Google, and I think there's a huge opportunity to create that same level of excitement around a number of other employer brands in the market by addressing the number one issue of the millennial generation, which is student debt. So what you also see on the team is our tech team. We have an eight-person team in Romania that is moving through kind of an agile methodology every two weeks. The gentleman in the middle who's leading our technology development. And we have Kristen over here to the left. She leads our uh, user and university growth. So this is a little bit of a participation in the audience. Do you know the average amount of student debt today? We have lovely green t-shirts for anyone who wants to participate. How much? 30,000. 30, okay. We have another number? 80, 85, great. 45. 45. 50. 50. 60. 110. Oh, okay. Which one? Actually, if you were close to 35,000. Okay, so 35,000 average student debt. How long does it take you to get out of that debt on average? Number of years. Okay. Eight. Nine. Nine. Twenty. Ten. Thirty. 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 All right, 17 to 20 years. So our host, Chris, we very much appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. It's the t-shirt. Perfect. All right, so um, obviously, so we're a dual-sided marketplace, right? 60, 60 years. Actually, it is a multi-generational issue, right? Because a lot of parents get out of debt and they're paying for their kids to go to school as well. So we're going to transition to a demo. But um, So we, we're essentially the union of HR technology and financial technology. So everything we've talked about to this point is around HR technology. We'll take a look at what it actually looks like from a systems perspective. But what we're doing from a financial technology perspective 
right, is we're facilitating the flow of funds between the employer and the lender. So how does this work? So let's say, for example, one of our customers, HubSpot, meets a user on our platform that they're super excited about. They extend an offer. So every employer on our platform is offering 5 to 10% on top of the base salary in the form of student debt repayments. This is a key way that employers are looking to gain a competitive edge in the marketplace. So what we're hearing is that food and foodball is not as important as student debt repayment. So let's say, for example, they're offering $5,000, 5%. Let's say they're offering $5,000 for a year. Um, so what that essentially means is on a monthly basis, we administer the flow of funds between the employer, we bypass the user, and we go directly to that user's lender. And so what the user actually sees is this. So on a monthly basis, your amazing employer just deposited X number of dollars into uh, your student loan account, and then we're creating financial literacy, right? Because those who have student debt on average, miss out on a 401k contribution for at least 10 years, and by liberating these dollars, the user can actually start to participate in those events that their peers are benefiting from as well. What we're essentially doing by automating payments from the private sector to users like ours, we're also changing the risk profile of that loan, which enables us to do lots of interesting things in terms of delivering value to the users in the form of reduced interest rates and things like that. But I believe we are supposed to give a demo. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a quick view into what the employer sees. Because when you see the user profile, that will give you a really good sense of what input, what variables the user is inputting. Okay, so essentially, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an employer. I go through a very easy process, this two step process to get into our, our living database here. And um, you can see the number of, essentially, uh, the, the, the dashboard, the number of users that are within the system overall. And I'm very, I'm easily able to uh, to use these, and the internet connection is pretty slow, so it's taking a while to find them here. But of course, it's very easy to search and query the database, of course, for moving to machine learning and AI and things like that. We'll move that early next year. Right now, we're conducting really long searches and others to refine the list of users. Um, and you can see that I'm just able to select any particular user that I want to learn more about. I'm just going to go to my bookmarked users here. These are users that um, I've actually already viewed their profile. I find them particularly interesting. I may have already had a conversation with them. Um, and I can also, of course, specifically search by names. I'm also able to view my messages. So we're making a couple big bets on the whole process of how users and employers are engaging. It's obviously mobile first user-centric, right? And we know that actually users prefer to communicate in real time. Um, and we're really kind of deconstructing this whole process of how employers and users interact with one another in the interview process. And we're integrating into millennial preferences, like video and instant messaging. So for example, if I just consider the last thing in the show, if I, if I know in particular that I find TNU's profile interesting, um, I'm able to uh, I'm able to actually watch his video, the audience really loud, the audience is not going to play it. Um, and then I can just simply continue the conversation that I've already started with him previously. We're at our MVP beta state. Again, we released, we, we released this three weeks ago, um, and actually even on Monday, so it'll be sort of different, which I'm really excited about. But this just gives you an idea of very rudimentary aspects of finding, discovering, engaging the talent, beginning the conversation, and then once the user is actually hired, we administer the flow of funds in the back in the back end. So questions you guys have? Yes, Peter. How many employers do you sign up and how do you get the critical mass on the employer side? Sure, great question. So we're actually not releasing the number of employers that are on our platform at this point, but we're um, excited that we've actually exceeded the targets that we've set today. Um, it's in terms of how we reach employers. There are less than 3% of employers today that are offering student debt repayment, or this is starting there. It's really more of a traditional B2B approach. Um, my background has been 15 years in enterprise sales, the private director of sales in San Francisco, we spent like 10% of years. Um, but it really, uh, in terms of the critical mouse, uh, it's word of mouth, it's a traditional B2B sale on the employer side. Thank you. Two questions. One is what's, what's in it for the employer, and how do you get paid? Yeah, great question. So what's in it for the employer? So because there is um, 
for example, in computer science alone, there's a gap of a million people in terms of talent to demand. And so most employers are engaged in, in just the total war for talent today. It's extremely difficult for almost every employer in the market. Um, what we hear from financial services to bio and pharma to tech um, is every, everyone's competing with Google and Apple and Facebook. And so employers are looking for meaningful ways to make it very compelling for talent to join the organization. The other trend about millennials is they're hyper mobile. Um, and on average, they stay with the employer for 12 to 15 months. So by investing in student debt repayment over a three-year period, which is distributed on a monthly incremental basis, which mitigates the risk for the employer, um, it's, a, it's a very powerful retention strategy and retention tool. So it essentially becomes a self move of economics. It essentially becomes self-funding to maintain and retain that particular employee for a three-year period. How we get paid is threefold. So we'll be rolling out in a, in a monthly recurring equity model, subscription model, um, after beta, we take a 10% placement fee rather than the 20 to 30% placement fee that's the standard in the industry. And then we're also monetizing um, immediately around the opportunities we have to finance student loans on behalf of our users because we're materially changing the risk profile of our users. How do you with the tax implications and, and is it to the employer or the employee? <coughs> Sure. So today, unfortunately, there really are no tax advantages from a user perspective. Um, so there are a number of discussions happening at the federal and the local level around creating tax efficiencies for both parties, tax exempt for employers, pre-tax for users. Um, assuming there's no regulatory change, um, this is an incremental and important um, additional value prop that the employer can extend. Obviously, if it were people were pre tax, that would be far more attractive. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Is it essentially revenue neutral to the employer? It's essentially revenue neutral. You're exactly right. So we don't position our offering as a savings. It's really more of a revenue neutral approach. 